Okay, hi everybody. I just want to do a quick video here on completing the square. I just want to go over the procedure again. Um, and just note that when you divide by two, that's the same as multiplying by one half. And what that does is really just put an extra factor of two in the denominator. Now it turns out that's an important fact in all this. Um, and a lot of times that's one of the things that people miss that quite simply that dividing by two means putting a two in the denominator. Now, here we go. Remember that our goal is to convert this into the form y equals uh, a multiplied by x minus h squared uh, plus k. So normally what I do when I show people how to complete the square here is my first move here is to get students to do this. We're going to move that negative 18 way over there. Okay, and the reason for that is because in the next step here, what I want to do is I want to factor out the 3 Whoops, I want to factor out the three from the first two terms. And actually what I was about to do there was a very common mistake where you don't, in fact, factor out the three from those first two terms, from the linear term and the quadratic term, okay? Now what we do is we're going to complete the square on this linear, uh, this quadratic and linear term here. Uh, now the coefficient of the x squared there is one. First of all, we're going to notice that there should be a factor of two in that four. And if I take that factor of two out, I'm left with a two. So now what that means is I'm going to take that two, that value right there, and I'm going to square it. I'm going to complete the square, so it's going to be plus four, but I'm going to immediately subtract four because I can't actually change the value of the, the function here. I can't just add a four to it. I got to subtract that four as well. Now, bear in mind, I'm again, I'm not teaching um, how completing the square works, what it's doing here. I'm just reviewing what goes on here, what the procedure is. So once I've added and subtracted that four, what I wanna do here is I want to take the negative four out. And the only way I can do that is by multiplying by that coefficient of three. So it's gonna be minus 12, minus 18. And what I get from that, the benefit I get is that that leftover trinomial, that is a perfect square. And so now that can be factored as X plus two squared. And I've got negative 12 minus 18 is going to be minus 30. And now that is in the form that I wanted it to be. And I've completed the square. Now, the numbers there worked out fairly nicely. Let's take a look at one where it's not going to work out nicely. So again, the first thing I'm, whoops, I haven't been writing that. The first thing I'm going to do here is move that 7 out of the way because it's not going to be part of this next step here. Now, when I factor out that 3, okay, I'm dividing. So that's going to become minus five over three x and then blah blah blah. i got a plus seven here now what i'm going to do here is i recognize that there should be a factor of two inside there which means i have to divide this five over three by two and that's going to get me five over six okay so that is the value that i'm going to add and subtract here so it's going to be x squared minus five thirds x but i'm going to add five over six squared so it's going to be plus 25 over 36 and then immediately I'm going to subtract the 25 over 36 plus 7. The next thing that I'm going to do is take that negative term out. Okay, by multiplying by 3. And so it's going to be negative uh, 25 over 12 when I multiply that by 3. Okay. And then when I've taken that out here, the trinomial that I'm left with is a perfect square. The the number that I'm going to use here is going to be this one right here. So that's going to come down here. It'll be minus 5 over 6 squared. And then what I need to do is go tw negative 25 over 12 plus 7. I'm looking for common denominators. And so it's going to be negative 25 over 12 plus 84 over 12. And when I put that all together, I'm going to get x, 3 times x minus 5 over 6 squared plus 59 over 12. So the reason why I'm, I did it with these two examples here is the procedure is exactly the same. Where sometimes students get turned um, turned around here is when the numbers don't work out nicely. So you don't get these nice whole numbers. You're stuck with fractions. But I just continue moving ahead with it. As normally, I know exactly what to do with fractions. It's a little messier, but the procedure is still the same. Anyway, again, I was just reviewing the procedure. This wasn't really going through as a, as a good explanation for how to 